All right, guys, so let's talk confirming the loan signing appointment. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of what I do, what I say um, when I call and confirm the appointment, but just to kind of start at the top, right? Um, you'll typically get a loan signing appointment uh, one of a few different ways. You'll either get a call directly from a signing service, title company, escrow officer, um, a direct call, you may get a text message, you may get an email, um, and once you accept the assignment, once it's confirmed that it's actually assigned to you, um, you'll be provided with all the details for, for the signing. So you'll know the date, you'll know the time, you'll know the borrower's name, uh, the phone number, you'll know the location. Your first responsibility as a loan signing agent is to call and confirm the appointment with the borrower. Um, usually that should be within two hours. Um, that's important, two hours of receiving the assignment. And that's important um, because as an extension of the title company signing service or escrow office, um, your job is to make sure the lines of communication are open to be able to confirm all the relevant details for the signing appointment. Um, so let's talk about making the call. Um, and this is not rocket science. It's uh, nothing you should be super anxious about. But when you call the borrower, you're obviously going to introduce yourself as uh, as a notary. You're going to say, hi, uh, Miss uh, So-and-so. Uh, my name is Mr. So-and-so or Miss So-and-so. I'm the notary uh, that's been assigned to conduct your, uh, your closing. I just wanted to call and confirm a few details. So you're going to confirm that, uh, one, the date and time. Now, this is important because obviously you've received the information from the signing service, title company, escrow office, but you just wanna make sure that your understanding of the details and the signer's understanding of the details are the same. So you're gonna basically um, confirm that information. Uh, the date and time is very important. I try at all costs not to adjust the time. Um, I, I just won't accept the signing if it doesn't fit into my schedule. Um, I've been burned in the past by trying to do that and so, as a practice, I don't try to move the time at all. Um, and obviously you can't change the date because the docs are, are drawn based on a certain, a certain date. So you have to stick to the date, obviously. Um, I will adjust the time only if it's initiated by the borrower. And even when they do that, I will always reach out to the title company, escrow office, signing service to confirm that that's okay. The next thing you wanna confirm is the location, okay? Um, this is important because sometimes you may get details for the signing to occur at one location and, uh, and the signing may actually, you know, be at a different location. That can happen if your, uh, your signers or your borrowers um, live in one place and they're refinancing or buying a property in another place. Very easy for a title company or a signing service to get those details mixed up. I'm not saying they do often, but you obviously want to confirm uh, the location. Um, it's typically when you confirm the location that the signer will uh, may give you details, especially in this environment, of whether they want you to uh, sign in the garage or sign outside. Typically that will come up in that part of the conversation. Um, if you want, you can ask them if there's any specific uh, arrangements or, com or accommodations uh, they need for the signing to happen at that address again they may want it to be done outside and if they do hopefully they will give you the heads up on that they may want it to happen in their garage on a porch or or what have you it's also during this time uh, when a lot of signers nowadays will take the liberty of uh, telling you that they're vaccinated if they are um, and <laughs> if they do just just keep it moving i don't get into that conversation over the phone with with signers regarding vaccination okay you also want to confirm uh obviously who you're speaking with and if they are the only person signing or if there's other individuals signing with them sometimes you only get information for a wife and there's a husband that's signing or you'll get information for um for a, a son and the mother is signing or you have three people signing you want to make sure that um, and, and get a sense of what their understanding is of who, um, who needs to sign and you need to confirm that they will all be there present before you um, at the time 
of the signing unless it's a split signing or unless there's other arrangements being made by the title company for uh, the signing to occur in a, in, a, in a different way. Obviously, you can't notarize uh, signatures for people that are not in your present, so present, so you'll obviously have to take the proper courses of action when it comes to, to that. I won't get into that. I've talked about uh, split signings and that, that type of thing in other videos. But what you wanna do is make sure that, uh, especially in the case where there's um, a couple, um, a husband and wife, um, that if they're supposed to sign, that they're both gonna be there. Some, some notaries like to ask about things like pets or the borrower may say, hey, do you have any alert allergy to cats or dogs or do you have any issues? Some signers will, will proactively mention it. Obviously, if you have an issue with, with cats or dogs, you can ask the question and perhaps in a nice way, um, ask if, if the cat or dog or whoever, turtle, roach, will be, uh, will be contained uh, during the signing. Um, and at the end of the day, if you don't feel comfortable with what you feel like you're walking into, then you should just ask for the signing to, uh, for the signing service or title company to reassign the signing because obviously um, don't want you to put yourself um, in harm's way. But there's ways to navigate that in a very professional way um, just to make sure, as I said, you're not walking into a situation that you uh, may feel uncomfortable with or you may, you may feel is detrimental. Um, depending on the type of property you're signing at, there may be certain information uh, like gate access codes, if it's a gated community, or certain you know details relevant to parking, um, or you know arriving at the property that you probably should be aware of. Um, you know you can simply ask them, are there any uh, specific details I should be aware of uh, with regard to my arrival at the property, uh, parking, um, things like that. Um, any specific special instructions, you can also ask uh, the signer about that. It'll just make um, your uh, your planning and your, your arrival probably a little smoother. Um, and then lastly, and probably most importantly, um, is actually confirming uh, uh, the that they'll have the proper identification. So you wanna make sure that everyone that's uh, signing and that will be in attendance has the proper identification as required by the lender and title company. Sometimes you don't have the docs um, at the point that you're confirming the appointment, so you don't know exactly what the requirements are uh, per the docs, but I, I make it a habit of making sure and telling the signers to have at least two forms of ID. One must be a photo government issued ID that's not expired. Um, and then I you know, tell them, you know, secondary form of ID can be a passport, a uh, permanent resident card, a social security card, uh, um, healthcare insurance card, um, uh, a credit card, debit card. Those typically typically suffice as secondary forms of ID. I just make sure to, to let the signers know that each signer will need two forms of ID. I also tell them uh, to make copies of them. Um, all signers won't have a copier or won't be able to do that, uh, but most lenders and title companies will require photocopies of IDs. I ask the signers to make those copies so that I don't have to take the photos um, and you know on my phone and have them printed out and all of that. Obviously, if they don't have the capability to uh, have copies, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take the photos and I'll get the copies made um, based on you know what the title company or the lender requires. And then another thing is to um, set expectations. So you, you set expectations with regard to um, how the signing is, how long the signing is going to take. So for refinance, I, I typically tell signers that hey, um, this process usually takes 45 minutes to an hour to go through all of all of your loan documents. 99% um, of people are okay with that. You'll occasionally run into people who um, have an issue with the fact that it takes so long um, when they express some sort of um, you know, uh, anxiety about that or when they, if they get upset about it or, you know, ask, you know, well, why does it take so long? I just typically say, hey, uh, ma'am, sir, uh, these packages are typically, you know, 150 to maybe 200 pages. Um, 45 minutes to an hour typically will give us enough time to actually get through everything and sign everything. Um, and that typically um, will, will help uh, disarm them or, uh, or what have you. And then I know I said lastly already, 
But the final thing is a little more difficult, um, I find, especially if you're confirming the appointment when you don't have the documents yet because you don't know um, if any funds are due, you don't know the loan amount, you don't know any details about the signing um, and about the documents. So it's important to ask them um, you can ask them, you know, it, what is the loan amount they're expecting and if they're expecting to receive funds, um, you know, for closing or they're expected to, um, to bring funds to closing. Um, so this is important so that when you actually get the loan docs, you can confirm that the loan amount on the closing disclosure is the same as what, uh, what they mentioned. Um, also, same thing for closing costs and, and cash that's due to them or from them. Uh, when cash is due from them, you want to make sure that they're making arrangements to actually um, get those funds to the lender. Um, most lenders, title companies, etc., will expect you to collect funds um, if uh, funds are due. Um, now, from what I understand, this can vary state by state. Um, obviously, follow your state laws and guidelines. Uh, with regard to collecting funds, but you just want to make sure that they have the funds and that uh, They're going to either provide them to you or send them to the title company in a way that is acceptable to the title company i.e um, certain title companies want uh, Funds over a certain amount to be wired so um, you can ask them, you know if they're if they plan to wire the funds or they plan to provide certified funds, some lenders in title companies will allow personal checks below a certain amount, like five hundred dollars. But obviously, you have to follow the instructions of the lender and the title company to make sure um, that um, the form of payment um, that uh, the, the borrower is providing um, is is what the lender requires. Um, so those are really the most important things that you need to go through with the borrower on the confirmation call um, to make sure, um, you know, and set, to set yourself up for a, a smooth signing. Um, obviously, this is not a perfect uh, science, especially when you don't have the documents ahead of time um, and you're just, you know, calling to confirm them, uh, confirm the appointment and you, uh, you, don't, you don't have that information. Um, but I will say it helps to, um, once you get the documents, to actually call them back and say, hey, I have your loan documents. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you, uh, that what the documents say that I have are what you're expecting. Um, so those are really the major points that you need to um, think about and, and talk to, to the borrower about when you call and confirm this appointment. And certainly this will uh, set you up for a successful signing. Um, again, um, this is all not a perfect science, especially when it comes to uh, loan amounts and, and closing costs and cash due to or from the borrower, especially when you don't have the, the docs. Um, it helps to actually call them once you get the docs and confirm those numbers before you print, um, before you head to the signing location so that you don't waste, uh, waste your time, your toner, uh, your paper, and so you can save yourself, um, um, save some of your sanity. Uh, but I hope that was helpful to you. Um, just kind of my rundown of what actually goes into uh, confirming a signing and a, a confirming a signing appointment, and what you should be uh, talking to the borrower about when you call to confirm the appointment. Hope this was helpful. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.